Okay, I am going to get this started. So we're gonna start with the movie catalog service. What is this? This is a blank Spring Boot project. How do I know that? I go to the source, actually switch to the packages view. You see here, there are two classes in this, in this application. Okay, one is the movie service, movie catalog service application class, and then there is a test class. You're not gonna be doing any testing today, so this is the only class in this application. And it has the annotation called Spring Boot uh, application. This is what tells Spring that this is a Spring Boot application, and it starts a lot of things automatically. So I can technically run this because it has a main method, right? All Spring Boot applications, well, most Spring Boot applications have a main method. It's like the typical way of creating these apps. So you can just run this. I can say, click this play and run. What happens? Well, the Tomcat server runs, but then it doesn't have anything to execute, right? It's just a bare minimum application. It doesn't know how to handle requests. The reason Tomcat server runs here is because we've chose web. Web requires Tomcat, so the starter web dependency brings in Tomcat by default when you when you click run here. So it says the application has started on port 8080. So I can go here to my Chrome window, and then go to localhost 8080. And you see the server is up, although you get an error page because there is nothing here. So what's happening here is it's trying to look for something to do when you access localhost 8080. It says, okay, is there a controller map? Is there something for me to do? It doesn't find anything because we haven't added anything. So it says, okay, something is wrong. I'm gonna go to the error page. It goes to the error page. Is there something to show for error? It doesn't find anything there as well. So it shows an error about showing an error. It's, this, is, this is an error which says I cannot even show an error. That's how bad the situation is, right? So this is, this is what it is. It says white label error page. This application does not have an explicit mapping even for slash error. We will fix this by adding our API, right? Let's look at our API. What is it that we want to do? I'm going to go to, all right, this is the API we want, right? We want something which accepts a user ID in the URL, and it returns back a payload with a list of movie details, right? The catalog details. So that's what we're going to be doing. Go to IntelliJ, I'm gonna to go to the movie catalog service application, and I'm gonna create a controller here. I'm gonna create a resource, a REST resource. I do that by right click, new, Java class. I want this in the main and not in the test, so I click okay here. And then the name of this is gonna be movie catalog resource. I'm gonna put this in the resources package. So this is gonna be the guy who is gonna accept requests for give me the catalog for this ID, and it's gonna return the list of movies with everything bundled together. Okay, now how do I make this a REST resource, a REST controller? Anybody knows? Add, 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 add an annotation, yeah. This is a REST controller. And that's it. Just with that one annotation, this is now a REST controller. Now, whenever you make a request, Spring Boot is going to look at this thing and say, hey, do you have any mapping for this? If I were to deploy as is, nothing will change. Spring Boot is still going to ask this, and this guy is going to say, I don't know. I, somebody told me I'm a REST controller, but I don't have anything to do. I'm clearly not. So go ask somebody else, and then you're still going to get that error page. However, we can have this handle the request. So I do that by creating a method, public. Let's say it's a list of, uh, let's call this catalog item. Get catalog for for a user ID. Okay, so I need to create this class called catalog item. This is gonna be the model. Okay, so what this controller is gonna do is create multiple instances of that model and return it back. We are just hard coding it at this time. And then this is going to have uh, a couple of fields, the title of the movie, 
and then um, description and the rating. These are the three fields we want to show, right? So that's going to be the array. Each array element is going to be the movie name, the movie description, and how much the user has rated it. So I'm going to create getters and setters for all three, actually. And then I'm also going to create a constructor which takes in those three fields so that I can pass that in when I'm hard coding it. So I've created this constructor which takes in the name, description, and the rating, and it's going to create instances out of that. Now that I have this, I can hard code, let me import a list here, I can hard code a simple list to get started with. Okay, so I'm going to say return, I'm going to use collections.singleton list, and then new, I'm going to create a new catalog item on the fly. And uh, let's say in the name is uh, some movie name. Anybody? Transformers. Transformers. Somebody said Titanic. I'm sorry. If you hate Transformers. Uh, description, uh, I don't know, test. And then rating, say it's a four. And that's it. Here's our dummy API which accepts a user ID, and then it returns just Transformers, right? No matter who you are, no matter how much you like or hate the movie, you are going to be getting Transformers back. Now, you need to tell Spring Boot to treat this as an API that is accessible at catalog slash user ID, right? So I'm going to do this in two steps. I'm going to go here at the top, and then I'm going to use request mapping annotation to say, hey, Spring Boot. When somebody calls this URL slash catalog, load up this resource class. And then you also tell it, well, somebody calls catalog slash something, that something happens to be a user ID here. In that case, call this method. And of course, notice the curly braces around user ID. This is telling Spring Boot that this is not literally matching user ID. It's a variable. So no matter what they enter there, slash blah, blah needs to be taken as a variable. And then not only does it have to take it as a variable, it also needs to pass it to this method as an argument. And you tell that by using path variable annotation. And then you say that user ID thing that you mapped it over there, pass that to me, please, and with this. Spring Boot is going to do that. And I can run this again. And whenever I say slash catalog slash Kaushik, it's going to call this method with the user ID as Kaushik, and it's going to return this singleton list. Let's run this again. Go back to this. Now, localhost 8080 is still going to give an error because we don't have anything mapped to that. But I can go to slash catalog slash foo, and I get transformers. Make sense? This is a dummy API. Have you built a microservice yet? Is this a microservice? No, it's just a Spring Boot application. Let's do one more. 